Holy Week will soon be here, where we recount the events of the trial, passion, death and resurrection of Jesus. His trial, however, is not simply confined to the short period following his arrest in Gethsemane. It is going on in a protracted way long before that. We have a good example of it in today's Gospel. It appears that the scheming leaders used the woman's predicament to put Jesus to the test. They were envious of his popularity with the ordinary people, so they approach him with a hidden agenda. If he opts for leniency, he'll be accused of rejecting the Mosaic law, but if he goes for stoning, he'll be labelled as being cruel and inhuman. Jesus, however, wrong foots them by suggesting they take a long, hard look at themselves. This in no way condones any supposed wrongdoing on the woman's part. Sometimes it is necessary to blow the whistle for the common good, but we need to be scrupulously careful not to implicate people unjustly. Pope Francis, for instance, wasn't five minutes on the throne of Peter when some segments of the press were associating him with the notorious junta dictatorship of the 1970s, which he flatly denied. During his interrogation before the Sanhedrin, Jesus himself was falsely accused by people who are hell-bent on bringing him down. The scribes and Pharisees were not interested in the woman's welfare. In exposing her supposed sin, they subject her to a kind of psychological abuse. Now, have we ever used the sins or vulnerabilities of others to further our own misguided agenda, regardless of their personal overall welfare? Sadly, I've heard of situations in a marriage breakup where the reputation of the estranged partner is sullied by the other party often in front of children or grandchildren with the sole aim of making themselves look good to the detriment of the disaffected partner. Now surely that's a sort of emotional manipulation of the young people or of children. Much to the exasperation of Jesus, the Pharisees seem to be playing that game in today's Gospel. In not condemning the woman, Jesus inflames the hostility of the Jewish leaders towards him. The full force of their anger will soon be vented during his trial and coming passion. The powers of darkness are behind it. Scripture notes that it is Satan, not Jesus, who accuses us day and night before our God. Jesus doesn't point the finger at anyone. On the contrary, when we acknowledge our guilt and seek his forgiveness, he comes to our defence, like he did for the woman in today's gospel. In his sacred passion, all the guilt and shame of our sins is transferred unto him. So the fingers pointed at the woman will soon be pointed at him. As scripture notes, God has burdened him with the sins of all of us. Ours were the sufferings he bore. Ours were the sorrows he carried. I'm sure she was feeling mighty pleased when Jesus sent her accusers packing. The world would be a far better place if, instead of gloating over another's misery, we point people in the direction of him who is mercy and love incarnate. Now, thank you all very much for listening and God bless you all.